for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before him now with reverence and fear. In him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. How awesome is the sight, a radiant King of light. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to worship this Sunday morning. It's really, really lovely to be with you again uh, and to share in this time of worship. Uh, wherever you find yourselves, however you watch these services, we pray that you would be blessed by this time of gathering together. Uh, we're entering a harvest season now. We're, we're entering a, a time of creation. And in our services over the next few weeks, we're going to be celebrating Creation Tide and thinking about uh, how all of creation praises God, uh, comes before God, but but also our responsibilities towards God uh, and towards this planet and this world in which we live. Uh, in our churches, we're celebrating creation tide and harvest. Uh, this afternoon, our harvest festival, Helifield, will be held on the station platform in Helifield, and we would really, really love to see you there. Uh, it's a songs of praise service with Giggleswick and Settle Brass Band, uh, a lot of our favourite harvest hymns uh, and some other uh, regular hymns as well, um, but really lovely singing uh, hymns. So we, we hope and pray that um, as many people as possible will be able to gather on the station platform uh, to sing our praises to God down in Helifield this afternoon. So that's at two o'clock. Uh, but the Station Cafe, uh, Shed 24, will be open. Uh, you're very welcome to get a brew beforehand. I think there's a steam train there at 12. <laughs> you might need to hurry for that one. <laughs> um, but look, if you'd like to be a part of that service, then you would be very, very welcome. Uh, all of our churches uh, are now open. So Settle meets at 10.30. Uh, of a morning. Uh, Ingleton meets at 10.30 of the morning. There is a service this week. There wasn't one last week um, because we were just slightly concerned about the, the spikes in numbers uh, in the Ingleton area. Um, Bentham meets regularly at 10.30. Um, Burton at 9.30, uh, though occasionally uh, at 11 joint services with Parish Church. Uh, Newby are alternating morning and, and afternoon services every other week. Um, 
So look out for the notices for that. But you will be very welcome to join us at any of our church services in person. Uh, but we will be continuing with our online services too. Uh, both morning services and evening services. So uh, in our evening services, um, Stephen has just finished a, a short uh, series on Obadiah. Uh, they're all available to catch up with if you'd like to do that. You see the posts on our websites for the links uh, on our Facebook pages. Um, uh, but uh, this week uh, I'm beginning a service on uh, a series on creation, uh, and that'll cover the, the next three or four weeks, uh, looking at some of the theology of creation and creation care, uh, but celebrating too, I hope, uh, the glorious diversity and wonderful creation in which we live. <sighs> Notices aside, then let's uh, let's just pray as we gather together before God. Oh God, at this harvest time, we stand at the gateway, at the time of balance between light and dark, and we give thanks for the days of summer. And we stand too at the point of change, at the turning of the year, as we go from growth to gathering. And we give thanks for the days of harvest, for the light poured on us, for all that's grown within us, for all that will sustain us in the dark days of winter. We thank you, gracious God. And we pray now as we gather together that you come alongside us. May your spirit be our lead, our guide. May we worship you from deep within our hearts. We offer you this time in the name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. Uh, so this harvest season, we are reminded that we come before God, we stand before God only because of the goodness and the graciousness of Christ. And so we celebrate with our first song. Let's sing together. Boldly, I approach your throne. Boldly, I approach your throne. by redeeming love before the throne of God above he pulls me close with no scars hands into his everlasting arms when condemnation grips my heart and Satan tempts me to despair the voice that scatters fear, the great I am, the Lord is here. Oh, praise the one who fights for me and shields my soul eternally. Boldly I approach your throne, blameless now I'm running home. Blood I come, welcomed as your own, into the arms of majesty. Behold the bright and risen sun, more beauty than this world has known. I'm face to face with love himself, his perfect spotless righteousness. A thousand years, a thousand times Are not enough to sing His praise Boldly I approach Your throne Blameless now I'm running on By Your blood I come Welcomed as Your own Into the arms of majesty This is the art of celebration, knowing we're free from condemnation. Oh, praise the one, praise the one who made an end to all my sin. Boldly I approach. 
song that is isn't it one that reminds us that you know we, we gather together in this place not through any work of our hands not through any position of our hearts but because God's redeeming love invites us to be here by grace alone somehow I stand where even angels fear to tread invited by redeeming love before the throne of God above and so we're here simply because God invites us to be here not because we deserve to be, not through any work that we've done, but simply because of the work of God. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the love that you showed us in your son, Jesus, for the work of his redeeming love, the work of the cross, his pain exchanged for our freedom. And so we pray as we gather in this time, Lord, make our hearts new in you. Fill us again, we pray, with your redeeming spirit. Pour your life into us as we lift our hearts to you, Lord. Bring us again into your presence. We pray that we might be conscious of you and of all that you are. May we have a real sense of your presence here with us and among us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This past couple of weeks, Pam and I have been on holiday and it's been a lovely time of renewal, a lovely time to recenter, um, and just to lift ourselves up a little bit. Uh, it's easy, isn't it, to, to get into routine, um, but it's been really nice just spending time with one another. Uh, we were able to walk quite a lot. You, those of you on Facebook will have seen some of my uh, pictures from, from up in the fells in the Lake District, uh, and it was really lovely. Um, and I wanted to include this next song simply because um, there, there's an assertion within it that, well, it says it, it's well with my soul, and and it is well with my soul, but it's it's not simply well with my soul because I've had some time off. It's well with my soul because God's in charge, because, because I'm here in his name because of his work, and it, it doesn't rely on me. So let's sing together, shall we? It, it is well with my soul.
it's a really lovely song that, and, and a really lovely version of it that, that Rachel's sung there. I, I really, really like it, and it speaks to my soul. Uh, and I think this this idea uh, that whatever my lot you have taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Uh, I think there's something really deep, actually, and and, and incredibly meaningful and spiritual uh, in that because it. The state of my soul shouldn't rely on the state of my mind. Um, my soul is Christ's. My soul will never be other than Christ's. And so it's well with my soul that whatever's going on in life, uh, however good things are, however tough things feel, it's still well with my soul because my soul is God's and he tends to it. Uh, we're going to hear our first reading now. We're going to hear two readings this morning. The, the first reading is from... Um, psalm 145. Uh, this is a, a psalm of David. Um, you'll remember with some psalms that there's a, a, a couple of words written above them uh, as introductions, that superscriptions they're called. They appear in um, some of the old, old manuscripts of the Septuagint, which is a, a very old collection of scriptures. Um, and, and the superscription on Psalm 145 uh, it's the only one in the Psalms that simply says praise. It says praise of David. Uh, and we're going to read that Psalm now. I would extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. <clears throat> One generation shall lord your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendour of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed and I will declare your greatness. I shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power, to make known to all your people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his works and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. and He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. That's a lovely psalm of praise. So we're going to go into that scripture in a little bit, and we're going to contrast it with a reading from Philippians where uh, Paul's lot is maybe slightly different to how David is feeling uh, in that psalm. Before that, though, we're going to sing again. Uh, and that psalm of David reminded me um, that his, his spirit, his attitude, as he wrote that psalm, was an attitude of, of just thanksgiving and praise. It's a response to, to who God is and to all that God has done. And that's the very heart of our worship response to God. And so we're going to sing, heart of worship, let's sing together. When the music 
That's a really lovely worship song, isn't it? And one that takes us to the, the heart of uh, who God is and, and asks questions about why it is that we're here and our response, the response of our hearts to all that God has done. Let's just pray. God of hope in the stillness, bring us to the very heart of worship. You call us into your presence, creating us a response, grateful hearts willing to serve you, to make the hope that you've given us known to a needy and hopeless world. And so we pray for those in need. We pray for those who are sick and suffer. We pray for those who've lost loved ones. We pray for Nora and the family of John Wooler. We pray for the family of Edward Wilkinson. We pray for the family of Althea Shepherd. We continue to pray for the families of Peter Nock and Robert Whitfield. We pray for the family of Kathleen Miller.
God, in our loss and in our mourning, be our comfort, we pray. We pray for those who are sick, those who are suffering, those who are lost and lonely, those who've turned to the wrong places for hope and comfort. We pray that you would come alongside them in their distress. We pray for your healing on our broken world. We pray especially this day for all those in Afghanistan, those who've fled, those who tried to flee, those who fear for their lives. God, we pray for a miracle in that country. We pray for your healing life on our broken world. And we pray too in this creation season for our planet, for all that seems so awry. Loving God, we pray for you to intervene, to heal this world and to turn the hearts and minds of men and women everywhere to creation care rather than exploitation. Commend our prayers to you, Lord, not because we're worthy, but because you asked us to name them through your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to hear one more reading now. This is from Philippians. Um, this is Paul. Uh, Paul is in chains. He's imprisoned um, because of the gospel. Um, and Paul could be despairing uh, of the situation in which he finds himself, but he isn't. Um, and he writes to the church in Philippi. Uh, just to offer them some encouragement, because they too are going through a time of suffering and difficulty. So this is from verse 12. Um, I'm going to read from 12 to 18, uh, and then from verse 27. So from verse 12, Philippians chapter 1. I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel so that it's become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers and sisters, having been made confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, now dare to speak the word with even greater boldness and without fear. Some proclaim Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. These proclaim Christ out of love, knowing that I've been put here for the defence of the gospel. Others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but intending to increase my suffering in my imprisonment. But what does it matter? Just this, that Christ is proclaimed in every way. And in that I rejoice. And I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. But I say this to you, live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation, and this is God's doing. For he's graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him too. Since you're having the same struggle that you saw I have, and now hear that I still have. This is God's doing, Paul says. For he's graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. I don't know about you, that doesn't seem much of a privilege, does it? <laughs> what Paul was assured of, and what we need to be assured of too, is that whether in lovely, happy circumstances or tough ones, 
God is alongside us. The Spirit of Christ dwells with us and in us. Uh, we're going to go into that in a moment or two. We, we're just going to sing uh, again before we do. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Let's sing. sins and griefs to song that is isn't it and what a lovely version of it um, let's just pray then as we go into God's word oh God we pray that your word would be for us as bread broken to feed our hungry souls we pray that you would be our teacher our guide our inspiration through these scriptures in Jesus name amen amen so look, these two scriptures that we've read, Psalm 145 and, and Philippians 1, uh, provide a, a real contrast with one another. In Psalm 145, David is well, remarkably joyful and exuberant. This isn't what we get from David in his Psalms. Uh, it's one of the very few where his praise for God isn't interspersed with pleased to crush his enemies to visit terrible vengeance on their lives uh, or else to forgive his sinful nature and to lift his downcast spirit into a new and full relationship with God. Uh, this is a psalm of unadulterated praise uh, and it's the only one of David's psalms that, that is so. And it isn't just David who's praising, he wants to include the whole community, all flesh, shall praise both past and present one generation he says shall uh, tell another they shall recount the wondrous works of god they shall tell of the marvelous deeds that he's done and so god's praises will live on 
And finally, all creation joins in that praise. It's not just the faithful people of God, it's all of God's works that tell of the glory of his kingdom, that speak of his might. This is a, a wonderfully expansive, joyful hymn of praise to God. Uh, and it's an expression of a, a heart bursting to proclaim the majesty and wonder of its creator and sustainer. It, it, the, the book of Psalms is broken down into a, a series of different uh, hymn books, according to scholars. This is uh, the, the final psalm in, in the third of those. Um, and, and the final psalms that come after it are, are kind of a doxology. Um, psalm 150 that rounds it off is, is a, a simple doxology of praise to God. Um, so this is fitting, isn't it, to, to end these hymn books, these ancient hymn books, uh, with just unadulterated praise uh, and a heart bursting with wonder. But it made me wonder, uh, as I was reading it, what are the mighty acts that this generation, that our generation, will tell to the next? What is it that we will pass on? What is it that we commend of God? How do our lives in this generation proclaim the goodness of God to our sons and daughters, to our children and grandchildren? What is it that we tell? Uh, last week, Pam and I were on holiday and, and it was a really uh, lovely break, as I said earlier. We managed to get away for a few days to the Lake District and uh, we stayed in Keswick. We walked for most days, some days climbing high up into the fells and sometimes staying low by the lakes and rivers. Uh, on the Saturday of our time off, we, we got up early. Uh, it was a bank holiday weekend, so um, we needed to get a car parking space. So we, we drove down early to Rosthwaite uh, at the foot of the Borrowdale Valley. Uh, we parked the car in the village and we set off to walk uh, down the path by the river to Stonethwaite in, in one of the, uh, the quiet valleys. I don't know if you've been that way, but it's a really lovely valley. The hills rise on all sides. And as we walked, the morning sun illuminated the most beautiful creation, catching the, the trees on either side of the, the majestic hills. I took a few pictures in the valley, pictures of the river, uh, pictures of the sun rising on the hills. Um, it was happy uh, and peaceful. But as you'll be aware, I'm sure, if you want to have the views at the top of the hill, and we did, uh, our ambition was to climb uh, a hill called Great Crag. Then eventually you have to leave the valley. You have to leave the calmness of the river and start climbing. And so just after Stonethwaite, we, we turned off the path and began to climb. We walked across a couple of open fields, um, uh, some, some lovely bracken beginning to turn in the autumn. Uh, temperatures and so we got to a, a wall style next to the woods that cover the slopes of Great Crack. So we began to climb through the woods so it got steeper and steeper and the going got tougher and I've got to say that that path through the woods up Great Crack was one of the steepest that I think I've ever walked. It was a very narrow uh, stony path that wound its way up through the trees that clung to the slopes. And as the trees pushed upward, so they blocked the light and blocked the views. And we had no sign of how much progress we'd made. We stopped often. <laughs> we stopped often uh, with the excuse of just needing to have a drink of water or something like that, but, but truthfully to bring the heart rate down <laughs> as, the, as the, the incline got steeper and steeper. We caught our breath and, and in my case at least uh, we were sweating profusely on the way up. After much effort and, and quite a lot of time we began to catch glimpses of light above us. The path began to ease, the trees began to thin and we saw heather on the hillsides as the trees gave way to open fell. We emerged from the trees, not yet at the top of Great Crag, but we still had some way to go past Doctar. But now above the trees, surrounded by purple heather, we had 
amazing views of the surrounding hills and valleys uh, above Stonethwaite and far, far beyond. We got our cameras out, we took loads of pictures, we talked about how amazing it was, we, we ate nearly a packet of fruit pastels. <laughs> then we walked on towards Stocktown and the Summit Cairn. There, there were even more of a, amazing views down to Watt and Lath, back up Durham Water to Bassenthwaite and Skiddaw beyond. We took lots of pictures, we took our time on the fell tops. When I got back home, I, I posted some of my photos on social media, on, on Instagram, on Facebook and, and anywhere else that I could think of to do because my photos were amazing. The, the hills that morning were beautiful. My friends and followers, those that saw the photos, commented on the amazing views and scenery and how beautiful it all was and said how much like, how much they would like to go there too. Now, what I hadn't shared with them was the effort and commitment that it needed to get there. The walk was hard work. My legs ached that evening. We're in danger sometimes of reading the stories of faith, reading psalms like this of our ancestors in faith of David, and perhaps sharing only our own remarkable faith moments. We read of their highlights, their close experiences with God, the, the remarkable things that they did. We read the stories of David and, and marvel at his kingship uh, and the state of Israel under his leadership and his close relationship with God. And we long for the same things, to experience the same remarkable places. Well, if we do, we have to know that there's an effort and a commitment necessary to achieve them. In Philippians 1, Paul talks of the suffering that he's going through and the suffering that the church is experiencing too. There are divisions and difficulties, the people are oppressed. In verse 12, Paul says, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that my chains have served to advance the gospel and all the more as I continue to proclaim it without fear. Paul, like David before, doesn't want us to sanitise the Christian journey. Faith isn't like our Facebook walls, full of glorious pictures of felt-ups, without the effort to get there. We don't live Facebook lives. We live real lives, where often we're in between. There are lovely pictures on my Facebook of peaceful valleys, lovely rivers flowing through them, beautifully sunlit, peaceful times. And there are amazing pictures too from mountain tops. But our lives aren't spent in those constant moments of joy like David's in the sun, nor in continuous suffering like Paul's. The reality is most of our Christian journey is lived out on that narrow path in between where the light seems scarce and we get small glimpses of all that lies ahead. And the real question that we need to answer is how we share that life, how we live that life as a faithful gospel life. How does our everyday labour, our mundane moments, our ordinary times make the gospel known and reflect the truth that we know and share the hope that we've come to believe? How do we effectively commend the works of God to the next generation in our everyday? And the answer to that surely, as Paul well knew, as David well knew, is in how we live and act and love. What happens, Paul says, in, in your life, in the fellowship of believers, is the most important thing. And he says to the church in Philippi this, conduct yourselves in a manner, manner, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. It doesn't simply mean when you're locked up in chains or when you're exuberant on a mountain top. It means in your everyday lives, conduct, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. 
And the one thing that ties these two readings together, and perhaps that we might take from them this morning, is the deep assurance that David had, and the deep assurance that Paul had, that God was with them. David in his praise, Paul in his suffering, the church in its moments of difficulty, and us in our moments of ordinary, can be assured of the presence of Christ. Whether in great joy, whether in great suffering, whether on mountaintops or valleys, or whether on that narrow path in between, we can know that God travels with us. Christ journeys at our side. And if we were to pass one thing on to the next generation, then, then perhaps it's that. In our joyful moments, in the most desperate moments, in all of the ordinary moments in between, God is with us. He's trod the paths of this earth before. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that you're with us in all of our moments in this life. Whether celebrating joyfully, whether suffering quietly and painfully, whether simply in the ordinary, everyday, mundane moments between. We pray that we might become more conscious of your presence, of your spirit at work alongside us in our lives. And we pray that we might continually give you thanks and glory. May we live with the hope and commend your works to one another and to generations to come. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So look, we're going to sing our final hymn this morning. And our final hymn uh, is the lovely um, Saviour Still. You are my Saviour Still. Let's sing together.
Um, it's a really lovely song to end with. Uh, it just reminds us, you know, in, in our moments of joy and in our moments of hurt, uh, Christ is alongside us and we find ourselves in him uh, because he is here. He is incarnate. Uh, he is with us. Look, it's been lovely to join with you again this morning. Thank you for joining this service. I hope and pray that you've been blessed. Um, and I pray that as we go from this place this week, we might be a blessing to our world. And so may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon us and be with us this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Uh, you're welcome to join us, as I said at the beginning of this service, in, in any of our in-person services. Uh, next week we're uh, Ingleton, Settle, Bentham, 10.30 uh, in the morning, um, and Burton at 9.30, Hellyfield at 2pm. It would be lovely to see you in those services. Uh, we've got uh, a season of creation going on in our services in Settle. Uh, there's a climate group that um, we created in, in Settle Church. Uh, and that climate group are, are leading services next week in Ingleton and in Hellyfield, uh, raising awareness of um, some of the issues that our, our world is facing um, <clears throat> and celebrating everything about uh, the diversity and the, the, the majesty of God's creation. If you can make it to one of those services, then um, you would be very welcome there uh, in either Ingleton or in Hillyfield. That's 10.30 or 2 p.m. Um, uh, it's been lovely to join with you this morning, uh, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. God bless. <laughs>